Hey guys, this is Lauren Productions, okay, and I'm a 4673, and I am back in Queen of Dance, and, um, this is gonna be the last episode I'm, uh, filming today, uh, I'm filming a bunch of these, <laughs> like, at the same time, my throat is about to die, so I have a lovely glass of water that will hopefully keep me going, so yeah, let's just go. Are you implying that your men aren't intelligent? Oh, wait. Give me a second. <sighs> hey, my guys don't need to use big stupid words to get uh, good at their jobs, and you've got no right to making them feel dumb because of that. If I felt they couldn't do their jobs, I wouldn't be suggesting. I swear to Alfia, if you say that word, word again, Oh, has the word somehow defiled your mother? If I'd known it was such a delirious... Ah, uh, you know what? Supercilious. There you go. That's a big, great, fat word for you. Do you like it? James then moved in front of the archmakers in deliberate confrontation. Someone should probably put a stop to this before it got out of hand. Alright, let's break it up. <laughs> Even if I wasn't part of it, my... But even if it wasn't part of my job to do something like that, someone needed to. I hesitated, however, as I walked into the conflicts that had nothing to do with me. It always made me very uncomfortable. The, that's probably a good thing. Luckily, someone else rode up before I need to, uh, needed to, and I shouldn't have been surprised that it was Prince. What's the trouble here, men? He actually looked sort of serious first, but then he spotted the human mechanics. Mechanics? I don't know what that is, ah, and his expression softened. Hey, calm down. He laughed, and then from everyone, and from anyone else, it might have been offensive rather than diffusing. He is using big stupid words just to make my mechanists feel dumb. I wasn't even aware they were being offended. I was simply stating that a quick visit to the cleric would help a mere... <laughs> I don't know that word. Ameliorate. Ameliorate. <laughs> James, please, allow the man to finish, finish his statement and then you can offer your rich bill. Yes, thank you. As I was saying, I was... Uh, as I was saying, I, w I only suggested that you go for a cleric to help with alleviating the pain of being burned. Wait, one of your men was burned? No, the archman the archmagus burned him. But you said he hadn't been burned. I did not physically burn him. He was just too burn him. He's just too dim to recognize that I have verbally slaughtered him. Um, uh, why exactly? Because the man was being facetious about imp the importance of magic in this army. Really, facetious? Would you would you prefer wack waggish? I wouldn't prefer waggish. <laughs> well, oh, hey! Look, clearly everyone said something they regret now, right? No, not especially. Really, because all I'm seeing right now is our arch. uh, arch magus. and uh, antagonizing, hey! Uh, our elite mechanics. mechanics in front of a lot of men who are relying on both of you to be cool under pressure and keep them alive. It's quite shameful if you ask me. But he. who started it isn't especially relevant right now, is it? Look at the audience you've drawn. Each one of these men is looking at the both of you and fearing that the king has made a bad decision of putting you both into places of leadership. Is that what you want? No. Archmagus? No, your highness. Good. I think we can all agree that you, uh, you'd you both be better off not riding near one another in the future, yes? Uh, let's see that happen, shall we? Gladly. Fine. Perfect. I, Cordell, uh, go and let the commander know that everything has calmed down, will you? I nodded and promptly wrote back to the commander to do as I was told. He didn't seem particularly interested in being informed, so I ended up just riding next to him until we found a good place to stop. After a full day of marching, it was nice to have a rest. But bright and early the next morning, it was time to move out again. Lovely. The king was up front uh, in the march today, so that the men, so that the men there would have a chance to see him, 
So the men there would have a chance to see him. Which made me want to avoid the front at all costs. This had an unfortunate side effect of putting me near Commander Bruce. He was currently re uh, regaling Nick in some story and preventing him from doing any sort of inspections, so I was taking the initiative to do them. Somehow, just asking someone what was expected of me felt like uh, something uh, that would get in trouble for, un uh, for unless I asked Nick. He was in this. Uh, so, uh, I can still not words. I just sort of wandered along the soldiers, avoiding the front and feeling incompetent and a little, a little useless. In the distance, I could spot the head mechanist riding alone, which was strange, since he was usually at least surrounded by other mechanics. Mists. Also spotted Prince the Prince branching away from the troops he'd been riding along for inspections himself. It looked like he was wandering into the nearby woods, which immediately reminded me of the wolf attack when I first met the man. No one seemed to be following him either. Now I'm gonna go up to James. Seeing James alone was a little strange. He was usually surrounded by other mech mechanists, chatting happily and looking like he was enjoying himself despite the war raging around him. I almost didn't think much of his walking alone until I got a glimpse of his face. He looked pale and tired. He barely noticed me riding up alongside him, but then from his pers perspective, he might vaguely have registered there was a deer coming up and not anything about who was on it. I waited for him to look up or at least address the person who came to him, but he didn't. James not speaking fir up first worried me more than his looking, uh, than his looking worn down. James, are you feeling well? James' attention snapped up to me. Oh, hey, did you need something? I was asking if you felt well. Oh yeah, I'm totally fine. I talked to the clerics and everything. How about you? You feeling okay? I'm fine. I was just curious why you were walking alone today. Oh yeah, I woke up kind of tired today, and I didn't want the guys to think their boss was getting soft. I told them I had some planning to do and needed some time alone to work it out in my head. I do that a lot, so it's not too weird. That's good. Do you want me to leave you alone too? Yeah, I mean, no offense, but I'm not in a great mood right now, and I don't want to worry anybody. But I guess I just told you the truth, so you're going to be worried anyway, huh? <laughs> Oops. It's okay. Things have been rough. You're allowed to be worn down every once in a while. Yeah, I know. I just don't want my guys to lose faith in me, you know? They re really rely on me, and they're used to, uh, to me being a happy guy. If I started acting all depressed, they might think things are going bad. Maybe, or they... Or they're just as tired... Oh, that this is me. Maybe, or they're just as tired as you are and don't think they're allowed to show it with you there. Yeah, I thought of that too. Another reason I thought I'd just walk alone today? Give, got, give everybody a good breather. <laughs> Hope it's helping that I'm not just making them worried. I could go check. Nah, they'll all just stiff if you ride up and I'm not there. You're the boss too, you know. I'm just an, a an aide. I'd... <laughs> if anyone is the boss, it's my brother. <laughs> that too. How is Nick? We haven't chatted since he got promoted. Fine enough. I guess he's pretty busy. Yeah, he probably is. <laughs> he's uh, really uh, come to talk. He's not really come to talk to me since we all marched out. Should have expected that, right? We're all busy. There is a war. There is a war. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Nick will talk to you again once he's used to the whole assistant commander thing. You think so? I don't know. He's a really private guy. Usually I have to go talk to talk to him, but I'm afraid I might just be bothering him. I don't think he would be. I had to do that at home too, and he always seemed happy about it. I just think he feels awkward going up to a person if he doesn't have a reason to. Our father was like that. To Thomas Cordell, right? It's cool your father was a knight. I guess so. <clears throat> Water? I never really knew him that way. I mean, everyone told me he was a knight, but he was really just my father. He'd teach me about sorts of politics, and then we'd go tend to a cross. Yeah, that's what Nick, uh... Uh, Nick said, well, the teach me part was teach my brother and stuff. Yeah, he taught Nick too, but he was more interested in other things. Never anything specific, really. Just, uh, just anything that wasn't what my father was teaching me. I guess he found it boring. Did he? I wonder why he focused on uh, that stuff when he came to Afria. Wait, I thought he came here to learn about medicine. Not at first. He picked it up late, way later. Actually, he bounced a lot, around a lot, now that I think about it. I know he had some classes with me, but he never really focused on anything until medicine. I guess he wanted to find himself. A lot of Sildarian guys come to the capital to do that. And you? Nah, I always knew I wanted to be just like Grandpa. He gets to play with cool toys all the time, and he's really smart, but not sm snobby smart like Rubis is. 
I couldn't help but remember yesterday's argument just a little. Grandpa can explain uh, anything to anybody in a way they can understand. It's really cool. That sounds nice. My father was like that too, though maybe not as smart as your grandfather. It's very easy to learn things uh, if he was teaching them. That's really awesome! It's so cool you got to know your dad before he died. I take it you didn't? Not really. Him and Mom are explorers, so I never see them. They sent me letters and cool stuff from all over the place, but yeah, that's really it. I'm sorry to hear that. Don't be. I know they love me and everything, they're just bad at being parents. <laughs> I have grandpa though, so it's not like I was never taken care of or anything. I'm actually pretty glad they left me with him. I'm really happy in our free and his, as his apprentice. That's good. Yeah. Will you become a knight like your dad? I haven't really thought about it. I guess if I was offered, I wouldn't turn it down, but I always thought I'd just be a farmer. I like farming. That's so weird! James laughed, and then our attention was pulled away from one another. Commander Bruce was calling me. Crap. Excellent news, boys. Look ahead. I noticed a bit of commotion ahead of the uh, column as we marched toward the Goddess Bridge. She was probably scouts coming back. They've been sent out by Commander Bruce to find a location to start placing supply dumps about the, around the bridge. If they come back this quickly, it meant they located some possible locations pretty easily. That was good. It meant we could set up quickly and focus on crossing into Silgarian... Guardian! It's not Silgarian, Silgarian territory. The commotion died down soon enough, but uh, a halt was called likely to get our London supply wagons catch up with us so we could actually make the supply dumps. While the soldiers around me took the halt as a stance to sit down and recover from the day's march, I noticed Nick riding towards me. I was surprised, I would have expected Commander Bruce wanted him helping with the logistics or something. The commander asked me to take a few of the men and scout out one of the potential sites for a supply dump. It sounds pretty promising, but we need to make sure it's secure before we uh, start moving supplies. The last thing we need is still guard torching or stealing our supplies. So let's get moving. Wait, you're talking to me? Yeah, I think you and I can handle whatever is in these woods, don't you? Maybe if it's just some animals or a lone predator, but what if we run into a wolf pack or a bear, or some silk guardians who have the same idea we did? What's the odds of that happening? Probably higher than you think they are. We're taking some soldiers. Fine, fine, if it'll make you feel better, who should we take? You're the assistant commander, that should be your call. The other one's being paranoid about a scouting mission. You should pick since it's your peace of mind. Yay! <laughs> Having some of the magical support would be a smart idea. Don't you think we should take the archmakers along? Okay, now that that's all, let's round up, round up the men and head out. Yay! <laughs> it didn't take us long to get to the potential site, a uh, long abandoned town on, the town on the border. At least it looked like it had been before we got close to by. There wasn't a soul in town, but instead, just being uh, depleted and falling apart during the age, and holes in the roofs and walls look like they've been caused by something more recent. But holes. Oh my god, I can't read. Secret weapons, perhaps. I hadn't uh, seen them in action much yet, but with the way the building had collapsed, like uh, something heavy had clearly hit them. What happened here? It looks like a battle happened. Maybe it did. This was the border town. Or maybe tensions escalated inside the town itself. Why would that happen? This is not free in town. It's only half a Rian, you know that. The other half was Sil a Silgard side of the border. So when the war started, a miniature one happened here. Maybe. Um, uh, or maybe Silgard just didn't want to use whatever supplies they had. Uh, want us to use whatever su supplies they had here. We don't know. True, I guess. It wasn't a waste either. It was a waste either way. Yes, it was. But we have a job to do, so if we should focus, so we should focus on that now. I probably, sh it probably would be best if we spread out. And oh no! An incoherent and high-pitched scream of fear from one of the soldiers cut me off, and after a quick glance in the sound's direction, it was easy to see the reason for it. A hulking black. Thing had appeared in our path. Its thick, brutish arms dragged across the ground, making a sound like silk and gravel. The indicate 
that indicated that it was substantial enough, but it looked like it was made of smoke and shadows. I'm sorry it always stops in the middle of a sentence, but but I forget time and then the recording just stops at some point. <laughs> um, let's see. The thing was formed of reaching tendrils of darkness that writh writhed about, constantly grabbing for something as it slumped and dragged its way towards us. Hmm. Doesn't sound good. <laughs> the dragging mess of art. By the way, I'm really sorry for um, not commenting much. Um, I wish this. It's I don't. I, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. But like, it's such an interesting story. <laughs> I just get sucked in. I'll 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 be here. I swear. <laughs> From now on, I'll be here more. Okay. Ended in. My many fingered hands. Each finger ended in long, wicked claw, the color of a moonless night. The arms were the only noticeable feature aside from the huge, uh, a huge gaping maw set smack in the center of its chest. It was filled with row upon row of teeth, all varying shape and shapes and sizes, as if some madman had ripped out the teeth of every predator in our free and stuck them inside the mouth of this horror. Ochre and some unnameable vicious substance uh, dripped off the points of each tooth onto the ground as it moved. The creature lacked eyes, yet I could feel it staring straight at me. Its unseen gaze was full of death and blood and a dreadful hunger that froze my blood in my veins. As it dragged itself closer, it billowed out an awful noise like a mix of a dying bull, a roaring bull, bear, and a terrible bird of prey. It lifted up a massive hand to strike the nearest thing. Me. I could hear the men shouting around me vaguely, Nick saying something, but in the distance, as, but it was distant, as though I was standing far away from them. My brain screamed at me to reach for my sword, but my nerveless hand couldn't move, as it convinced this was only some sort of nightmare. Before the terrible force could muster, the, the beast brought its claw down. Oh my god, there's a timer on. Uh, oh my god, uh, the Dutch! As the claw came whistling towards my head, I managed to stumble back. My legs more responsive than my arms, but not by much. Thankfully, it wasn't enough as the claws buried themselves in the ground in front of me. Had I moved a step less, I would have probably been dead. This violation returned life to my limbs, and I drew my sword. Blood pounded in my ears from terror, and my, my breathing was ragged. The creature yanked its claws out of, of the earth, uh, leaving deep go gouge marks on the ground. It billowed its de dreadful cry again. As the beast screamed, the other soldiers cried out in fear and stumbled back from it. Wow. <laughs> We're really fucked then. <laughs> More than a couple dropped their weapons in their sheer terror. I couldn't blame them. This was something out of a story of a uh, of a story, a nightmare parents would scare bad children with. Not something stalking us in broad daylight with a terrible single-minded hunger. But here it was, rumbling for our blood and bones. My own fear was making thinking difficult, but it was clear that we weren't leaving this town alive if we didn't do anything. Dirty the men. I couldn't do this alone, so I turned and trying to muster up an authority voice, I called out to them. Stand on your ground, everyone! We can't! We can take this beast if we strike together! Stand your ground against this! Are you mad? Let's get out of here before it kills us! The soldiers swung wildly to keep the beast at bay as they pulled back, which didn't seem to do to the, cre the creature at least. It swung and scattered them like leaves, injuring more than a few of its terrible claws. Out of desperation, I charged forward and strung at, swung at it. After a moment, I heard Nick do the same. A few other voices weakly joining us when it became clear there was no escape from this monstrosity. A few unsuccessful, after a few unsuccessful attacks, the bees let out a frustrated growl and tried again. 
The sounds of blade unsheathing behind me was encouraging, though. It meant the others had recovered to join the fray. Nick was in lead, and I could see him out of the corner of my eye. He seemed to be charging into the beast. Nick, what are you doing? Attacking it, what does it look like? I started to... I started to tell him he could attack from further back, but he, if he could see the beast, surely he knew that. Why would he charge so far as if he, that he was also inside the thing? Nick was reckless, but he wasn't suicidal, suicidally reckless, at least not usually. Something didn't add up here. Always inspect. These men were scattered, some hanging back, clearly too panicked to actually accomplish anything while others were at least attempting some sort of, uh, retaliation. A few brave souls had rallied around Nick and attempted to help him form some sort of bulwark. The problem seems that none of them were in line with each other, almost as if they couldn't agree where the beast was. This made me think about Nick's comments as he charged into the fray. Could they not see it? Well, due to panic? That made sense, for some for some, but those focused enough tried to tactical thinking would be beyond that. This was something else entirely. That thought in mind I looked around at the others more closely trying to guard uh, what this the uh, Rupert had held his ground at the beast's arrival and looked back and uh, looking back at him now, he seemed to be in the middle of a lengthy explanation that no one except him had been paying attention to. And besides two lives for anything in this world would naturally encounter this area of the world. With all that in mind, it's very easy to see this this is all a magical construct, so we should all calm down. What? I was just saying that's the structure. At the end. What were you saying at the end? Well it's the conclusion that this a uh, trom trom truly crafted hollow processing is an illusion in layers man terms. An illusion. So a magic is here. There would be the obvious conclusion, yes, likely out of sight, save from the flailing swords and panicked men, if he's intelligent at least. I'd assume uh, in one of the buildings, but they seem like sensitive casting locations in my mind. So if this was the illusion, there was a megas nearby. The houses seemed like the safe location, while being flaunted about desperate to damage the phantom horror in front of us. The question was then, which one? I didn't know that much about magic, but I would assume that our magus would need to keep uh, to see us to keep the solution going. It had to be one of the houses nearby. There were three that would have an uh, unstructured view of us right now. One had its windows entirely boarded over, so it was so that was an eliminated option. The second was half fallen down, meaning our magus would easy to spot it. Uh, so that was also out. The left that left what looked like a modest home, which had a rather small pair of windows looking out on us. That seemed functional enough to be our hideaway. Go face him. Leaving the others to deal with the illusion, I strode over to the house, my soul still drawn. The mechanism would be distracted, was distracted from maintaining the illusion. Surely, I could handle this on my own while he focused on the bulk of a force. I was halfway to the ha house when I heard the sounds of confusion from the battle. Where did it go? There, it's over there, it's fleeing! Uh, we've got it on the run, boys! Drag it down! With a loud cry, the sword just charged over towards me. I stood there confused, looking for the illusion, but seeing nothing. I stepped out of the way, but the soldiers followed my steps that laid bare. Die, beast! The illusion was on me. Fuck, I died! Okay! Then I should probably not do it alone. Okay, going after a on my own was suicide. <laughs> I'm sorry for reading that myself. Nick had circled around the beast and was close enough I could grab him and pull him out of it. Hey, what are you doing? This isn't real, Nick. We've got a magus here. What? Didn't you notice you weren't hurting at all, no matter how hard you connected with it? All of us attacking it, we should have done no damage. Some damage. Now that you mentioned it, yeah, that was odd. It's because there was nothing to hit. Someone's trying to distract us. If we deal with him, the illusion should dissipate, I think. You think? I'm not a mage. I'm making a practical guess, okay? You think you can bang on that? 
better than nothing. True, I guess. Any ideas where our magic is? I motioned discreetly to the house I pinpointed as the likeliest hiding spot. That house seems like to the best starting point. Right then, let's go. Wait, we can't go charging in? Why not? He's a maggot! If he could create an illusion good enough to affect... he would probably take care of the covers. Yeah. Right. Okay, good point. So what's the plan? We sneak over. Follow me. Hopefully our maggots didn't e notice either. The building in this buildings in this time were so close to it was easy to slip from one another without being obvious uh, as we approached uh, the back door to the building the madness was likely in. It was off its hinges and the dirt in front of it indicated that it likely fallen off some time ago and only recently been propped back up. The more recent finger on Magus was inside. I gestured to Nick to keep to help me and grab one side of the door. He seemed to figure out what my plan was, and quickly enough moved to the other side. It was a sturdy door, but not all that heavy. Luckily, it wasn't decayed to the point where the roof was going to creak or break as we moved it. Setting the door quietly against the wall, we peered inside. The place was largely dark and coated in a thick layer of dust from disuse and lack of inhabitants. The furniture was overturned, and various bits of crockery and other household objects laid scattered about, forgotten in the haste of the previous owners to leave. A previous pair of footprints had cleared the dust from the floor, revealing a, a dark hardwood floor. Quietly I stepped forward with care and slowly made my way towards the front window, near Nick a few steps behind. Both our weapons were drawn, though hopefully the Magus didn't have much more of the, in the way of surprises waiting for us. Hmm. Inside the near window, a dark-skinned man with pale hair stood. His graves looked at the beast still attacking the men. The similarities in closing to our own rubies gave it away that he was who we were looking for. Nick responded more qu quickly to seeing the Magus than I did. He was starting across the room and pressed his blade against the throat of the Magus before he could even fully turn to see what the noise was. That's your bird oh, out there? Call it off. The Magus smirked at him. You can take my head off and... Probably, uh, if if I don't, I'm probably still doing it if I do. That's it not, exactly not giving me what reason to do so. I give you my word, he won't kill you if you get rid of the illusion. The word of a dog is worth is worthless than the rancid breath that uttered it. Your options are to take my word or die on the blades of two people really willing to be reasonable. One which is against some uh, rather vulnerable points. There isn't much reason for you to be defined about this. Hmm, true, you speak a s surprising amount of sense for a soldier. Very well, you give me your word you won't take my life if I dispel the illusion. I swear that you won't be harmed, I'll ensure that myself. Very well. The maggots waved a hand and the creature dis dissipated like mist on a sunny day. The men looked around, confused on this, uh, by the sudden disappearance on this, of the creature. Are you sure this is a good idea? He's a maggot. He hasn't hurt anyone, though. Not yet, but if we let him go, he potentially will. He clearly, he's clearly with Silgard if he set this up. He has no other reason to interfere with basic scouting mission otherwise. I said I wouldn't kill him. We can take him prisoner. Ah, uh, that I'm afraid I can't allow. Again, you don't have much of a choice. You've got two swords in your throats. Perhaps it seems that way to you. Oh God. The Magus smiled and lifted his arm slowly. In a sharp, controlled gesture, he opened his hand in a bright flash and light engulfed him. Nick and I staggered back in pain, but seemingly as soon as the light had appeared, it was gone. It took um, uh, Nick and I a moment to recover from the sudden, blinding light. It was long enough that I started to wonder if I'd lost my sight because of this. Eventually, though, my vision started to clear again. Apparently, the flash was bright enough that it attracted attention as a number of the scouting team was outside the building when Nick and I stumbled out. One of the uh, nearly soldiers saluted Nick. So, the beast appears to be gone, uh, as if it was never here. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. How are the men? A few minor injuries, but nothing that will stop us from getting back to camp and getting proper treatment. He hesitated a moment before asking. If so, if I may ask, what the hell was all this? Apparently, Silgard has a maggot who likes to play tricks on your eyes. He got away, but at least now we know he exists.
real report this to the commander uh, Bruce when we get back. But for now, let's finish our mission. Yes, sir. I just realized I have to end the episode. <laughs> okay, we'll see ya. Bye.